first met Tina in the fourth grade. She was the smartest kid in the class, which will surprise no one. We were Girl Scouts together, and I've often thought back to our Girl Scout days and wondered if this is what might have ignited Tina's passion for supporting women and girls, which she's done throughout her life and career. In our freshman year of high school, our class leaders were all female, and Tina was the president. And our campaign slogan was, never underestimate the power of a woman. And I think that really set the tone for Tina and many of us. She brought so much passion to everything she did, even as a young girl. So I first met Tina when she was a young lawyer at Skadden Arps. I was so impressed with her as a lawyer. She was brilliant. She was strategic. She was determined that from the beginning, she's been committed to issues relating to women and women and children. She is also a big mentor. She reaches back to other women to get them engaged, to pass on the lessons that she's learned. And that's the reputation she has. And that's why I think she's deserving of the award. Through all the heights she's reached, all the places she's been, it doesn't get in the way of her humanity. She has been a mentor and a sponsor um, and, and, a, and a leader for the women she's worked with and she's come across in her practice over the years. But she's also stepped out to pave the way for women generally in a, in a very global way. I still remember when I learned that Tina would be moving from our firm in Chicago to join the new administration in Washington. And it really was so rewarding to know that the, the leadership and the guidance that we got from her in our own little world would now, you know, others, so many others would benefit from that. We knew that she had more to give and we knew that, you know, bigger things were waiting for her. And it was really quite amazing to see her move into into that role and to continue to sort of watch her from afar, if you will, do all the things we knew that she could do and more. We had the opportunity to work together every single day uh, for the eight years that we served in President Obama's White House. Tina and I both felt that our time at the White House leading the Council of Women and Girls was some of the most important work that we did during that eight-year period. But neither one of us wanted it to end on January 20th of 2017 when we left the White House. We wanted to continue to fight for gender equity. And so Tina sees the opportunity to lead the Time's Up Legal Defense Fund. So she's the perfect person to lead this initiative. Not only is she an outstanding lawyer, but she also carries with her this passion to fight for uh, the dignity of every woman, every working woman. So Tina has helped galvanize a movement that is much more than just a moment, but is going to propel, I think, women forward to fight for our righteous place at every single table. Nobody gives up power easily. You have to fight for it, and if there isn't a seat at the table, you got to bring your own chair. And Tina is really good at bringing up those chairs for those who can't carry their own. No idea how nerve-wracking it is to watch those videos. <laughs> they don't tell you what's going to be in them ahead of time. <laughs> you have no idea. <laughs> but uh, my deepest thanks, really, for the honor of receiving this year's Margaret Brent Awards. Um, I am really, truly humbled to be included with this distinguished group of awardees, some of whom I've known for many years, um, others of whom I have admired from afar. And now I really want that pink jacket. That be <laughs> and I have to say, as a longtime member of the ABA section of litigation, um, I, like Cindy, have been, I'm used to sitting out there um, at coming to what is the most popular, if not the most fun and inspiring event of the annual meeting. Um, so I have to confess I'm really still in awe of the idea that I'm up here and not out there. And as the video gives you a little bit of a flavor, none of us get here alone, and there are many, many people who have helped me along the way. Um, I especially want to acknowledge, I know Napaba is in the house, and they supported the nomination here. There you are. 
Uh, my longtime friends in the ABA section of litigation who you know, have been just dear, dear, dear friends my entire career. Um, my partners and colleagues um, formerly at Skadden Arps, my current partners and colleagues at Buckley Sandler. Um, and I'm also really fortunate today because the two people who are the most important people in my life are here. My son, Patrick Pressel, and my daughter, Emma Chen. <laughs> And thank you to the Commission on Women Profession, not just for this award, but for all of the years of leadership and advocacy to advance the cause of women's rights. It's been over three decades since Hillary Rodham Clinton founded the Commission, and if we have seen anything over the past year, it is that the work of the Commission and our collective work is far from done. Indeed, we have seen that despite the efforts of many of the people in this room for many years, we are still just at the beginning of changing workplaces and the culture in our law firms. And we've only to look at the work of President Hillary Bass and the commission this past year on what is happening or perhaps more accurately what is not happening for what the commission calls long-term careers for women lawyers or for seasoned lawyers or actually Hillary as I like to just plainly say, we old women lawyers. <laughs> And despite over a decade, as Hillary cited, of women graduating from law school in equal numbers to men, we are still at less than 20% of equity partners of large law firms and have a wage gap or compensation gap that in some cases is as high as 44%. Like many companies in America today, we need to realize that as hard as it is for us lawyers to admit, the law is not the only answer here. Our laws combating sexual harassment and discrimination are too limited. They set the bar for unacceptable behavior too low. They've allowed toxic workplace cultures to develop, and have, those cultures have not allowed our workers and lawyers and law firms to work in places where they feel safe, supported, and able to realize their full potential. In my work with Time Is Up, and in my new practice on workplace cultural compliance at Buckley Sandler, I've been working with companies and organizations that see the need to go beyond just legal compliance and understand the business and moral imperative to build truly diverse and inclusive workplaces at all levels. As the demographics of the consuming public changes and the country becomes majority minority, I truly believe the successful companies and law firms of the next decade will be those who address these issues as core business imperatives and not just nice to do employee benefits. So now that's the message I actually had long planned to give in this speech. But before I conclude, I feel compelled by recent events to add this coda. We are on the precipice, if not over the precipice, where the rule of law, of constitutional precedent and stare decisis, of privacy rights to our own bodies, equal justice, equal protection, and due process under the law is under threat as never before. It is not an exaggeration to say that how these issues are decided in the next few months will determine what kind of country we live in, what rights women, minorities, immigrants, LGBT people will have, whether the views of the minority that is becoming the majority will rule in our democracy or whether we will have a new form of government by those who will soon find themselves in the minority, not the majority, but who are hanging on to power through a control of the courts, manipulation of voting rights, and intimidation of our democratic institutions like a free and inquiring press. As lawyers, especially as lawyers focused on women in our profession, now is the time to speak out to act out, to take whatever actions we can, to take whatever actions we can to protect our democracy. We are in the middle of a truly historic moment and struggle, and history will judge all of us by what we do or do not do right now. There is no more urgent no more fitting tribute we can make to Margaret Brent and to all the women pioneers we have honored in all the past years than to commit ourselves today 
to this fight of our lives. Thank you.